Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, we just took a little bit of a break, um, but we are back in action right after the break uh, with actually another launch announcement. Um, so I'm Abby again, I'm here with Joe and Daryl. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so first off, uh, this is a super secret launch. Uh, tell me about what you're launching right now. Sure, so we're launching encryption of data in transit for Amazon EFS, Elastic File System. Uh, for people that don't know, EFS is a scalable, simple distributed file system. Uh, we're launching the ability to encrypt your data in transit in between your file system and its clients. Previously, you can encrypt data at rest, and now with this launch, you have a comprehensive solution at rest and in transit. So tell me a little bit about what you were hearing from customers that led you to add to encryption in transit instead of just encryption at rest. Sure. So uh, many customers have requested an encryption data in transit for security and compliance requirements that they have, whether they're a regulated industry, or many large companies have uh, organizational compliance requirements. Um, been a very commonly requested feature, so we looked for the, the simplest user experience we could provide uh, to get that to our customers. So how does that kind of fit into the, to the process for users? So I have, a, I have a file system, I want to encrypt things now both in REST and in transit. Where does that kind of fit in my process if I'm working as a developer? Sure, the first thing you can do is create a file system with encryption, encryption of data in, uh, at REST. So you do that when you create the file system. After that, um, to enable encryption in transit, you download an EFS utils, which is a, uh, an EFS published um, client we install on the client to uh, uh, to enable encryption at uh, in, in transit. Awesome. Um, so, can you tell me a little bit a bit about uh, the, the the process that you went through to kind of to kind of come out with this? So, what were you hearing from people that led you to add the whole in transit part to it? So, I know we've had EFS for a while. We've had in transit. We've had at rest for a while. Um, for customers just looking for that extra layer of security, what kind of customers do you see really asking for uh, in transit security as well? Yeah, generally speaking, it's it's an enterprise customer. So there's different categories of that. There's like people like in the healthcare industry, many require encryption in transit for, for say HIPAA compliance. Um, EFS doesn't have HIPAA compliance just yet, but this is one, one key uh, launch on the way to that path. Um, Many other customers in financial services, whether they're regulated and, and they must have that, or there's an internal compliance requirement, just if you're using AWS Cloud, we want you to have encryption and transit enabled for your service. So we looked at different options we had for providing that. Um, we worked backwards on many different solutions. We, we found really what's the simplest way with this, this mount helper that Daryl was just mentioning. Uh, it's transparent to users and applications. You can install it. Uh, from Amazon Linux, if you're using an Amazon Linux on me, it's a simple yum install to, to get the package, and it's available uh, on GitHub as an open source package as well. Awesome. Um, so I heard a rumor that you guys have a demo also, because I think the, the best question for everyone is how can I get started using this kind of beyond just yum install? We do. So, demo time. Absolutely, okay. Well, great, well here I have a, uh, I'm going to SSH into uh, my machine first time. So this is an Amazon Linux instance. If we take a look, we see that we don't have any ESF, EFS file systems mounted yet. So what I want to do is first, I'm going to download the EFS utils um, client. So it's a simple sudo yum install Amazon EFS utils. After a few seconds, it's already installed. Now what I want to do is I'm going to mount a file system. So let's go ahead and create a new directory. Let's create two. Now we're going to mount a file system. So let's go ahead and grab the file system ID of an existing file system I have. Let's go ahead and grab this one. So I'll just copy the file system ID. It's going to be a simple sudo mount. We're going to invoke this EFS mount helper. We're going to paste in the file system ID and then the mount point that we want to use. So I'm going to be mounting it as um, one of the directories that I just created. And that's it. Now we see that that file system is mounted using the EFS mount helper. Now let's go ahead and create a uh, mount a file system using encryption. Again, very 
similar command. Uh, this time we're going to use the option TLS. And this will signify that we're going to create an encryption, an encrypted connection. Let's grab a different uh, file system ID. Let's go ahead and grab this one. We'll mount it as O2. And now it's mounted. If we take a look at our mount or DF command, we see that this final file system that we just added is mounted uh, here. We can go ahead and uh, change our directory to it. Do a simple ls, and now we're accessing that file system over an encrypted connection. That was actually that was way simpler than I thought. It's very easy. I thought I was going to be. You're right. I'm actually also really impressed that you can get all of your flags for mount correctly. <laughs> I can never get any of the flags in the right order, and then I'm like, why doesn't this work? I well, know that I looked this up. So that's part of the mount helper too. Is we have all these recommended yeah. mount options for EFS to optimize your experience. Those are now included by default. Daryl didn't have to type in anything except his file system ID or TLS when he wanted the encryption, and then we, we take care of everything else for you. So I realize today that we're not actually launching the, the Mount Helper, that we're focusing on the actual launch, but how widely known is, is it that you have helpers like well, this? The, so the, you're right, we're not specifically launching the Mount Helper as like an official it launch. About, about the <laughs> no, Mount no, helper. It's, it's, really, it's really two launches yeah. combined in this launch, right? So the Mount Helper enables and, and facilitates uh, using the encryption and transit feature, but it's applicable even if you don't need encryption. You can still use the Mount Helper, and we are actually recommending you know, all file systems use the Mount Helper just to simplify the experience. Follow-up question, would you consider writing helper libraries for me for everything? <laughs> possibly, <laughs> possibly. I wanted to be able to auto-complete everything. It's like, did you mean to put your flags in that order? Uh, um, so I'm looking at kind of at some of the conversation happening in, in Twitch at the same time. Um, let's take a step back for a second. What are some use cases that you see customers using EFS itself for? Sure. So aside from the encryption angle, where are people using EFS and how are they using it? Yeah, EFS is designed to be a general purpose file system to serve really a wide uh, spectrum of, of workloads. Things from like highly parallelized scale out applications like big data analytics yeah. or media and entertainment workflows to more latency sensitive, single threaded, uh, serial IO applications, things like home directories or developer tooling, right. and really everything in between. Um, so it is designed to be a general purpose network file system. Awesome. Um, so a couple more questions from, from Twitch. Um, can one keep track of which, which, which ones are mounted encrypted and which are not? So can I tell from the Mount Helper which ones are encrypted and which are not encrypted? Yeah, so if we actually go back to, uh, to my screen, if you take a look and do a DF command, you'll see that the, uh, the file system mounted and you can see the file system ID, that is not encrypted. So that uh, connection is an, is an unencrypted or non-encrypted connection. Those that you'll see the actual, the sort of the local host, that is an encrypted connection. And so, do, you, do you want to mention why it's localhost, or I, I can? It's, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, so Daryl mentioned we are encrypting over a tunnel. Um, so the, there's an end, you're mounting locally against your local host, and then the mount helper is, is setting up and maintaining that tunnel. So that's why the output of the mount, the mount command or the DF command will show localhost, because that is the primary point that you're mounting. Gotcha. And then we're handling that encrypted tunnel for you. Um, and then it looks like we got some some extra special moderator help on that question too, which is that tracking whether it's encrypted versus not encrypted is handled client side. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Um, another question, uh, is it coming to Windows? Yeah, so uh, we, we get that request a lot from customers and what I can share is that we're constantly reevaluating, reprioritizing based on customer feedback. Um, we're, we don't have anything publicly to share right now about roadmap items. Awesome. Um, so right now for, it's, on Amazon Linux, you can get it with Yum install. Correct. Awesome. And um, it's also available as well for other distributions through our GitHub repo. Gotcha. So on the GitHub repo, the AWS repo, um, it's uh, we've tested it on uh, with uh, Amazon Linux, Amazon Linux 2, uh, Red Hat Linux 7, uh, CentOS 7, Debian 9, and Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Awesome. So if you're if you're just joining us, um, the question was, is it available for Windows? Not Windows right now, but uh, keep passing that feedback on. But it's not just for Amazon Linux. So you can pull from source from your GitHub repo, and you can install it. And you've tested it on Red Hat, CentOS, 
um, Amazon Linux 2, Amazon Linux 1. And Ubuntu as and well. Ubuntu and Ubuntu and Debian. And Debian, yep. Awesome. Yep. Um, cool. Um, okay, so definitely keep keep asking the questions. Um, Another follow-up question, would EFS ever have an API to directly access or manipulate objects on EFS? So, is the question if... I think they want to know if you could... If like a REST a, API for EFS type of thing? Yeah, the, to interact with the objects stored in EFS. Oh, an ob okay, an object store specifically. Um, interesting idea, for sure. Um, not, not a super common request. Yeah. Uh, you know, EFS is designed to be a file system. S3 obviously designed to be an object store. EBS as a block store, so like what we're focused on is providing customers different options for their different uh, paradigms of storage. Uh, EFS is obviously a file a file storage offering. Yeah. Um, so I have only a couple minutes left. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked that I should have about the use cases for being able to encrypt in transit or encrypting at rest or EFS in general? Is there anything that we're missing that people should know about when and how they should use this? So it is available for all EFS file systems, um, even if they were built you know, prior to this launch. And it's available um, at no additional cost. Awesome. Um, I have one more question. Uh, what do you guys see coming next? Um, so we, we just did encryption in transit. What do you see kind of happening next for, for EFS? Sure, so EFS just launched. EFS is available in seven regions today. Uh, most recently, the SFO region. Um, as we always say, more coming soon from a region perspective. Yeah. Um, we're always going to be adding more and more features um, based on customer feedback. Um, so, uh, and I mentioned too, like this is a really important launch for, for security conscious organizations. So we'll continue to raise the bar with features, uh, performance, and just more regional availability over time. Yeah. And I think I think it's one of those questions where it's like where people are, people want to know when to use it, and I guess I would always use it, like. Why, if I have the availability to encrypt in transit, why not? Like, it's only, it's only helping me. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it, it, so. if you have a file-based use case, then absolutely, yeah. like, you, you should use it. Um, you know, what we see customers do is test, you know, EBS, S3, based upon what their application needs. Um, you know, there, there's definitely um, a right fit for EFS if, if you have a, a native file workload right. um, and you care about high availability, high durability. Yeah, awesome. Um, it actually looks like our moderators are answering <laughs> all of our questions awesome. faster, <laughs> faster than I can read them. Um, Good job, so guys. If you, if you keep having questions about this launch, um, uh, there is a, is a mod from the service team in there right now. They've been taking questions as we've been speaking, but uh, if we keep getting questions, we'll pass them on along as well. Um, as always, if with any other service, keep passing on your feedback, keep passing on your feature requests, but we were super duper excited to, to launch this today with the, with the EFS team. Um, so guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thank yep. you. Thanks, Abby. And Twitch, we'll be right back.